Hi, we are Group 5 and today we will be presenting on the Haas culture. But before that, let's talk about cultural impacts on individuals, corporations and societies. Culture has intrinsic value and it provides important social and economic benefits. It affects the market demand, drives managerial behaviour, and knowledge of native culture is useful when dealing in foreign markets and countries. Culture affects the nature of business negotiations as well, and acts as a hidden entry barrier but can be overcome with cultural sensitivity, hard work and quality. What's most important to note is that culture is in existence in every part of the world, in everywhere we work, even in where we reside. And understanding a location's culture will help you to go into and work nicely in that environment. Thank you. I will now touch on the notion of culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, to do that, I will use the analogy of an iceberg. Um, we do know that more often than not, what we see at the tip of the iceberg is often not the root cause of the problem. Um, and it holds so much truth in today's business environment. Um, you know, we read a lot. Uh, we see a lot of research, a lot of conversations that we enter uh, touches on the need for transformation. Uh, and statistics is showing that 94% of CEOs predict significant change in their business models. With this in mind, you start thinking about how, how do we uh, tackle this business need for transformation? Uh, and, and you start appreciating as well that uh, many a times when we think about the problems that we face, um, it's not usually the hard facts that are a challenge. Um, it is actually the soft component of it, the interpersonal relationships, the um, people element uh, that would enable change. Um, so, you know, if you look once again from a statistics perspective, 72% uh, of leaders acknowledge that culture enables successful change initiatives. Uh, and 69% of senior leaders uh, do credit much of their success during the pandemic to culture. Uh, and this then sums up my uh, call out that culture is critical. Without culture, you can't enable the business to succeed and sustain in future. Okay, with that, I'll move on to the next slide. All right, so now I'll move on to the culture design journey uh, and to think about the steps needed to stitch or refresh a corporate culture. In the interest of time, I won't cover every single element, but I'll try best to illustrate the flow. Um, it all starts with the as is appreciation of where we are, uh, and very importantly, understanding the why behind the need to invest in a cultural transformation. Um, so looking at uh, the business uh, goals 15, 20 years down the road um, and reflecting on what do we have today uh, that supports that journey or what are the, our problems or challenges that we have today that hinders achieving the journey. Uh, with the business keys in place, uh, you know, again, you'll be thinking about the aspirations. How far end is it to Mars, to Venus that we want to aim to? So having a common uh, defined aspiration is helpful with the cultural design. Um, and then with that, you start setting the elements uh, by having the foundations needed to set uh, you know, the progress down the line, um, allows for systemic interventions and to track and measure. Uh, we also believe in the change curve. Um, so as we think about the journey, how can we bring our early adopters on, on board? What would be the key priorities to help business to embed their culture? Um, and of course, at the other end of the systemic intervention, uh, we look at refreshing or defining the mission vision values uh, to enable a common meta narrative Across the organization. Um, looking at leaders who are key
key influences uh, across the organization. So by setting a set of leadership behaviors, uh, it starts to concretize uh, and set expectations uh, and to help them internalize uh, and come on board the behavior shift. Um, and you know, in doing so, um, it will also see a maturity where they get to narrate, um, storytell, um, their journey, uh, why do the mission, vision, values matter to them? Uh, and that helps with the grassroots engagement down the line uh, to appreciate sense uh, you know, uh, how strong a, a culture, uh, the new culture works and are there any ground up uh, feedback that we should uh, factor in to uh, improve on the approach. Um, and of course, what we measure is what we manage. So putting in place uh, measurements uh, to hold our leaders accountable for cultural change. Uh, and of course, it is a uh, you know VUCA environment, to my earlier point, uh, and there is this constant of continuous improvement that will take place along the way. Okay, so with that, I will end and I'll pass it on. Thank you. We want to look at examples of two companies that failed because of poor culture. Arthur Anderson was a consulting and accounting service company that operated globally. Enron, the energy commodities company, was a client of Arthur Anderson since 1986. Arthur Anderson disregarded Enron's fraud and manipulation of its financial statements. When Enron was investigated, Anderson was in a, involved in a shred campaign where they shredded a lot of documents important for the investigation being performed by SEC. Anderson was found guilty. Enron filed for bankruptcy. Anderson ceased practice and the international offices of Anderson was sold to the Big Four. Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act to address fraud, enhance internal controls and enhance accountability of senior management. Anderson's case is a fantastic example uh, to remind the importance of corporate governance, integrity, and uh, uh, the culture uh, within accounting firms. The other case is Lehman Brothers. Founded in 1947, so the fourth largest investment bank in the United States, early years, they were focused on uh, client-centered value creation over growth and profits. Uh, after the founder died, the new leaders focused on higher pay and performance related bonuses and Lehman Brothers pursued growth at all cost, uh, despite the risks that existed in the world economy. Uh, and they filed for uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Um, they were also um, the ones um, involved in the subprime mortgage crisis at that time. Um, so essentially, uh, performance uh, uh, growth and uh, profit driven culture led um, after the founder died led to the uh, collapse of Lehman Brothers. Let's now talk about the importance of culture in mergers and acquisitions. And we have taken two examples. Alcatel Lucent, a telecommunication company, had a failed merger due to cross-cultural integration challenges. The merger in announcement in factor had only two sentences on culture. Um, they ran into serious issues as a result of personality clash between CEO Patricia Russo and a fellow board member, Sir Churuk, and cross-cultural issues at various levels um, in the company. They experienced six quarterly losses. Language was a big problem and Lucent executives found it difficult to adapt to the Alcatel's corporate culture. Alcatel, French company, high context culture uh, and uh, Lucent, American company, low context culture uh, was also instrumental in the cross-cultural issues that existed in this company. When we look at Amazon Whole Foods, here again, um, they failed to anticipate cultural integration and there were compatibility issues. Amazon was a mass market data-driven efficiency focused culture, whereas Whole Foods concentrated on a niche market. They were customer driven and innovation focused. It can be concluded that the two firms had drastically opposing organization cultures and different performance measures. Amazon had a tight culture and 
um, Whole Foods had a loose culture and this was also uh, visible in the uh, leadership um, styles of the two companies. Amazon operated on strict rules and productive team orientation while Whole Foods was disorganized and focused more on team happiness. The work environment in a company matters, um, both in terms of employee performance and turnover. The key conclusion on this slide is that um, culture needs to be managed uh, you know, properly and it should be part of the integration agenda pre and post merger uh, because left to itself, culture undermines value creation. Yeah, the next question is about how can the strategy is aligned with the culture? Okay, there is four things to remember. First, we have to understand that the strategy is about the execution. So it should come after the strategy itself. So the strategy should come first because the strategy is the one who determine what is the competitive edge of our company to be able to be a success. Yeah. Once the strategy already defined, the second we have to get the strong agreement for everyone, any stakeholder that need to adopt this culture, especially for the employee, because we know if they are not able to buy in, they don't want also to apply or adopt the culture itself. The third one, once they buy in, it also important to keep remind them in all the business process starting from the recruiting and then nurturing and also even the rewarding in the end of the years to ensure that all of the people is agree and remember with this culture and last we have to open with the necessary iteration because nothing perfect right if we feel that the culture is not supporting the strategy that already defined, we should evaluate and thinking, is there any way we can do better to make things happen supporting the strategy? Okay, that's all I have to ensure that overall strategy and the culture need to be fully integrated. Thank you. Then how can we get the entire organization engaged? Actually, it's very important uh, because engaged employees produce better business outcome than other employees across industry, company size, and nationality, and in good economy times and bad. Uh, then there is five tips learned from the course to increase uh, increase employee engagement. The first one is put everyone in the uh, right role. Again, get the right person on the bus and make sure they are in the right role. Uh, this means that all talent acquisition and retention strategy have to be aligned with meeting company goals. The second step is give them the training. Uh, no manager or leader can expect to build a, a culture or trust uh, without this. The third one is task meaningful work. Uh, engage, engage employees are doing meaningful work and have a clear understanding of how they contribute to the company's mission, purpose, and strategy objectives. Again, this is why they first have to place in the right role. Uh, I made the mistake of hiring great talent just to let them in the door, but didn't have a clear uh, career path or role for them. If you don't uh, sort these details out quickly, they will leave, of course. The fourth one is check in often. Uh, the days simply relying on mid year reviews for providing feedbacks are uh, long gone. Uh, today's workforce craves regular feedbacks and use them every week. The last step, uh, step is frequently discussed in engagement, which means successful managers are transparent in their approach to improving engagement. They talk about it with their teams all the time. And again, these principles are not complex, but must be uh, prioritized. Companies that get this right will drive greater financial results, surpass their competitors, and easily climb to the top of this 
the best place to work list. As leaders, there are five important things we have to do to create a strong culture for the organization. First, leaders must clearly define the purpose is the catalyst for everything leaders do. It is important for leaders to communicate the purpose, value and vision to bring people together towards the visions to create a strong culture in the organization. Second, leaders must walk the talk to reinforce company culture and value daily and with consistency. It is critical to reflect a culture through the actions, not just slogan. Leaders always lead by example. Third, leaders need to be willing to change first before others can change. Hence, leaders need to be able to sell away, understand how the cultural impact with the behavior and decision they made and willing to change whenever it's needed. Next, great leaders understand the most valuable resource is people. They invest in people and help them to develop their leadership capacity. Lastly, Leaders need to be transformative in order to inspire higher performance and stronger culture. To create long-lasting organization culture change, leaders need to approach in the way which minimize negative reaction and align to business strategies and corporate cultures. It is important to check the progress of the culture in the organization. Pause survey to get organization level feedback. This provides a broad area of the culture feedback and focus group allows us to understand a bit more detail the cultural behavior in the organization while regular check-in allows us to gather feedback individually. These three approaches allow leaders to check the progress comprehensively. However, besides getting feedback is key to have a check of the bottom line. Employee attrition and their performance would be the two important measures to reflect how the company culture is. A strong culture get people together, inspire people to strive for higher performance. Okay, so finally, uh, the conclusions about the culture. So our team conclude this six point about the culture. First, if someone talk to you about the culture is nonsense, it's a big wrong because culture is really matters. In fact, culture can be become one of the most important competitive edge because a company that able to execute better and faster can be the leader of the industry itself. The second one, culture is really a very important part of the strategy. Your strategy means nothing if it cannot be executed well. That's why the strategy have to be accompanied by a well culture. The third one, so many examples that poor culture cause company failures. For example, when the company join the merger and acquisition with a different culture and then they cannot go along and it's become a trouble with end up with the close of the company. The fourth one, overall strategy and culture need to be closely integrated. It should not be worked separately because it hand by hand each other help to ensure the business success. Then the fifth one is about culture should not be just some writing you put in the wall. It should be adopt, it should be agreement between the employee itself. It should be a buy-in. They trust with this and this is something that everyone pursue for. And the last one, culture start from the top leadership. The top leadership should be the example of the culture itself. It's nothing if we asking employee to do something while the top leader do not become the good example of it. So that's the six point from our team. Hopefully this culture presentation is really uh, give a benefit for everyone who see it. Thank you everyone.